today on Hitch 20. Talking directly to the camera. Yes. That's right. One of the things that breaking the fourth wall does is that it brings us into the character. The influence of Hitchcock's Arthur and what filmmakers can learn from it. No. These are the forgotten gems of Alfred Hitchcock. Join us as we explore the 20 television episodes Hitchcock personally directed. The Hitch 20. Hitch 20 is made possible by Glidecam, world-class camera stabilizers, and by Asden, quality audio for filmmakers, and by Michael Weesey Books, the world's top publisher of filmmaking books. We also enjoy the inspiration of subscribers like you. Thank you. Looking into the camera, this is something that most actors are told not to do. But with Hitchcock, it was a central technique in his cinematic arsenal. First, it creates a brief feeling that we've been caught looking. Are they? An unsettling leap from the screen. It also solidifies our shared connection with the protagonist's point of view. And it gives power to the person looking at us, adding cinematic weight to what they do next. Try and stop me. In Arthur, Alfred Hitchcock uses the device of showing us the ending at the very beginning of the film. So he has Arthur look into the camera and say, I am a murderer, and I did it, and I am free. Look at me. Greetings. Lovely day, isn't it? Hitchcock begins this episode with a man, a charismatic man, uh, talking directly to the camera. One of the things that breaking the fourth wall does, and also voiceover narration does, is that it brings us into the character. The character's able to tell us what they're thinking. And you see him surrounded by chickens, and he's petting a chicken as though to pet. And then, kind of unexpectedly, he breaks the neck of the chicken. No! Yes, that's right. I'm a murderer. Arthur goes on to apologize for um, shocking us by saying he's a murderer. Uh, but of course, that was his whole intention, right? Uh, to, to shock us. This is a time where cooking shows on television were a popular. So this, all, this also opens up with Arthur addressing the audience as if it's a cooking show. When it goes into the, the flashbacks, um, the flashbacks are highly questionable because it's so subjective. When you set up a, a film with someone breaking the fourth wall, uh, literally addressing the viewer, uh, then anything else is under the guise of his own subjectivity. The reason you've never heard of me is that I succeeded. I think it's rather suspicious that for a chicken farmer who runs the entire place by himself to be impeccably dressed at all times. Uh, he's a very measured, precise uh, person that is uh, so much in control of his life that he's the only person um, that runs this, this poultry farm, and he takes a lot of pride in that. He's a bachelor who's used to having everything in its place, and now this woman is here messing his system up. Darling, I'm back. She uses a cup as an ashtray. She throws a bunch of dirty dishes in the sink and then decides that we'll wash them later. Um, she is one problem after another. Uh, so when Helen comes back into his life, he sees this uh, control begin to diminish, and that scares him. I'm sorry, darling. Oh, don't fuss. It's only an old coffee pot. Once we're on the side of the protagonist, then the audience themselves needs to want to kill her as much as the protagonist does. When Arthur chokes Helen to death, 
we all of a sudden go tight into Helen's face as, as her eyes bug out as she's being choked, and then tight into Arthur's face. Mom! Then what e makes it even more creepy is Arthur looks directly at us. So we're now on his side in this story, not on the side of the police, which is an interesting thing. But then he has to deal with the, um, the inspectors and, and the, the uh, um, following case of the, this missing person. We have this friendly cat and mouse between our protagonist and his best friend, who is the police officer investigating the disappearance of this woman. He could have, he could have gotten rid of her, her suitcase and her purse, but he didn't. Uh, he likes to toy with them, and you can see that. So that's an interesting emotional dynamic going on. And the end is very, um, very darkly comic, right? He gives the inspector the, the pair of, of cockerels that were uh, fed the special diet, uh, this new diet that, that, he, um, that he concocted. These chickens were fed um, a diet with a secret ingredient, which of course is Helen ground up into the chicken feed. Um, and it also leads me um, to think of, of the famous ending of, of Fargo. I had not seen this, this episode um, of Hitchcock Presents, but uh, obviously the Coen brothers did, and you know, the famous wood chipper scene with, with Steve Buscemi in the wood chipper at the end of Fargo, uh, now seems to be a clear reference to this episode. Those Hitchcockian long takes just got easier with the versatile, lightweight Glide Cam Stabilizer. A Glide Cam on your production means smooth, flowing video. Glide Cam, the name and future of camera stabilizers. Asden sound production equipment is known worldwide, synonymous with performance and reliability. Asden gives your film the sound it deserves. Aston, quality audio for filmmakers. When it comes to setting up your shots, directing your actors, fixing your screenplay, and of course, saving the cat, Michael Weesey's experts have every production topic covered. The world's top publisher of how-to books for filmmakers. Here's my little specimen. Now, as you might have known, I am a murderer of sorts and I had gotten away with it. No! <laughs> Sorry, Rufus. I did not mean to do this to Danny, the monkey. Bye-bye. Orgus Productions is making an epic feature film comedy about human greed. We need your help filling the fictional world of the film with funny TV commercials. We call it Spoof Dance, and we have $2,000 worth of prizes. Go to our website to find out more.